Alvin, how are you? Hi! Oh, I can see some fire in those eyes. What are you thinking about so intensely? We could build an archery target. Do you want to help? Sure, do I have a choice? I love I love the sarcasm in this. I don't know if it's intentionally, I just love it. I will ignore this question. I can get us straw without any problems, but we could use some logs and a hammer to build it. You do not need to say anything else. I'll be back with the rest. All right, what do we want, Alvin? Five logs and one wooden hammer. I got what you need, Alvin. Here you go, what's next? I know a good place to build it, follow me. Oh, okay. Why is it that every single game on the planet, when you have to follow an NPC, they always walk slower than your walking speed? It's perfect here, what do you think? Yes, quite a good place, what next? Next I will practice shooting, if you have time you can show me how to do it, you're definitely better at it. Okay. Let's talk to Alvin. Hi. All right, my apprentice, watch and learn. I think 20 meters from the target is enough, my master. Fine. Achieve 20 points. Oh, look at that. There, it appeared. Distance 11 meters. Okay. Whoa, look at that. Like a boss. Yeah. The um, longbow is actually pretty cool, so I really like, I don't know if it's intentionally or not in the game, but I really like the fact that when you have a bow, the drop is much heavier because your arrow is not as fast, and you have to aim to somewhere like here to hit the center. But with the iron bow, or with the longbow, it's like here or somewhere. So I wonder if with the recurve bow, you can get even closer, aiming closer, like because I think it's the, the power behind the arrow is just so much higher. Um, and that's how it's done. If you only wear as modest as you wear accurate. <laughs> I can't be both. <laughs> There's a lot of learning ahead of me, and sometime after I practice more, we will organize an archery tournament. Deal. Until next time, then. Oh, I love it. So we now we have to wait for the next season. Oh, that's pretty cool. I really like these little mini quests, like with Alvin. I know they don't give us any um, dynasty rep, but it's still, nonetheless, it's pretty cool. Can I have my arrows back, please? <laughs> Let me just really quickly talk about um, pathing. Yeah, oh, sorry, paths. Yeah, making paths. We, we always said straight from the beginning, all oh, would be lovely if the game would let you make paths. Like, you know, something you select and you like a fence. You're saying like, hey, I want to make a path and you make a path. And also, if the devs are watching, which I doubt, but it uh, really would be awesome to build like a straight line of anything like that, like a path or a fence or whatever, and then hold down left alt or control or whatever. And then when you, as you go left and right, it curves it. It curves it, yeah, from the center of whatever you have the length of, yeah? And that would be really awesome. You could make a perfect circle of something or like, you know, make like a fence or a path that goes like not in a straight line, which is which would gives it a, a real more realistic, um, a nice more realistic um, feeling to it. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. So the problem with paths is that in the moment, a lot of people suggest, oh, why don't you use farms as pathing? And I, my first concern was, well, if I put down farmland, they start taxing me. So you guys were saying, no, the devs have confirmed um, on their forums or in Discord that you only get taxed when you start harvesting yeah, on a field. The problem, though, is if I put a path here of fields, so say like, I, like uh, I'm going to do this and bring the path all the way down here, and then I'm going to go here, and then I'm down here and here. The problem with that is that we can't currently assign um, farmers to a farm. So say I will have like 30 farms here, yeah? As soon as I assign farmers to work in a barn, I think they will go to any farm that is reachable. I don't know if it's like a 50 meter radius or if it's infinite in the moment, I have no idea. So what will happen is you will have farmers, as far as I know, randomly start plowing and manuring your, your path. I could be wrong with that though, but we would have to test it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally test it I'm going to put down a path here. Let's say I have a path going here. Okay, so now we have to hoe. Not cropped field. We have to hoe it. So, okay, let's get the hoe. You guys are in the way. Sorry. Um, can you move a little, please? I love that option. It's so great. I really wish a lot of other games would have that and have NPCs like that. 
Ah, okay, you see that? So this looks actually nice. I like this, yeah? So the problem now is that as soon as we tell our farmers to tent our farm, they will include this stretch here as well. So the only way of not having it look, um, or for them not to do it, I think, is to plow it and basically get it ready for seeding, but then not put any seeds on it and not assign anything to it in the farm section. So in the farm section on field two, we literally will leave all of this empty, which I think means assigned farmers will ignore this. Now, I don't know when taxes will start appearing for fields. You guys were saying only when you harvest. Okay. Let's actually only do half and see what happens. So now it still looks like a path. But let's see what happens with this side once the farmers start working. Remember we tried to repair a building and we couldn't and I couldn't figure it out. Um, yeah, you guys were saying that to repair a building, it has to go below 50%. So when it's green, it's actually still okay. But if you look at this wall here of the food storage, you can see it's really run down and it's below 50%. And once it's below 50%, you can repair it. And if, you, if I just go back into building mode, you can even see how it's run down. It's amazing. I really love this attention to detail. And I said that before, this game wins me over every time I see little detail like that. That it's just really nice, you know? It's not important to gameplay at all, but it's really nice. Anyway, so let's go left. Bam, it's 100%. Now, it's a pity you can't repair things that are above 50%. I don't know why they've done that. Maybe they didn't want you to panic all the time repairing things, but the problem is by doing it like that, you can't really tell when you have to repair a building by looking at the management screen. Because like I, si like I said, 66%, the food storage is not at 68. I don't know by looking at this, mm, some walls might be already broken. And as soon as a wall is broken, broken, uh, the building is considered, being considered not built, which is really bad if you rely on it. Because I'm assuming NPCs will ignore it when it's not built. Hi, husband. Say hi to our child. Nido, dear, our child died 10 years ago. Remember the accident? No, look, it's right here. This is so freaky, medieval times horror. So let's have a look and see how palisades work. So if we go to our fences, I unlock the palisades. And we only need sticks to place them, but of course we're going to need probably loads of logs to actually craft them. But let's say you come into our village and we can build between paths only. And let's say our village is going to be considered to be cut off here. Okay, so let's build a couple of key walls and then we can always connect them because I'm assuming it's going to be a drag and drop thing. So we want to leave room for people to walk through. And we need them to get out as well. So we want to have an entrance here possibly as well. So let's go here. So we can have one long wall or two or three, four. Okay, I actually do like the way it goes down. This is really awesome. And I always like for it to flick into the next wall, if you know what I mean, and then kind of go back and reset because otherwise the other wall that you have on the end gets very long. There we go. Let's put that in. And that's straight enough. And then what we can do is we can connect this one over here in an angle. We can remove this top, actually. I'm gonna have to build a new top. So what do we need to actually build? Six locks each. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's basically one wall, six locks. Okay, that makes sense. Now we have a lot of locks actually in storage. So let's go and finish at least this piece of the wall there we go very nice i love it i love how it looks like how it goes up and down with the terrain that's really sweet oh yes very nice it's giving your village a little bit more of a settlement feel very nice love it now we need a lot of logs this was 53 is 54 logs which is quite a lot seeing that you can only get 2.4 an hour with one lumberjack um so I would say I'm gonna assign both my lumberjacks back to full-time working in the woodshed. 
I have one digging clay in the moment because we're very close to unlocking the goose house, which then will allow us to get Dob. Those devs are absolutely tireless. It's unbelievable. They already put another update out. We're now at version, as you can see up there in the top left, 0.1.1.3. So 0.1.1.2 was the patch they actually pushed out earlier today, and it introduced the effects for the NPCs that work on the field. It literally says NPCs used to stop working in the field when the player did not watch them. They now have a better work moral. Very good. They also had a couple of other quests in it, uh, uh, fixes in it for quests and for uh, building management. And cave mining actually was increasing crafting skills, which is now fixed and it's increasing extraction skill. Anyway, not only that, they also added a game setting that you can change now for head bobbing. So by default, when your character walks, you see the head going up and down and you can turn that off now. So if that was something that was in there before and you didn't like it, there we go, you can turn it off. Or if it wasn't in there before, you can... Oh, it actually, it looks like it's still... No, that's just the ground being uneven, I think. So, yeah, but head bobbing can be turned off. So, and also, one of the best fixes yet, you can now remove permanently with a, tree stump, with a, uh, with a shovel the tree stumps, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you have loaded your safe game from 0.1.1.1, in 2.2, trees were growing through your buildings. That they, they had a little bit of a book there, so they released the point 0.3 patch, which fixed that. So if you have a save from point 0.1, load it into point 0.3, because if you load from point 0.2, you're going to have to recut down those trees that are growing through your houses. But um, they pretty much instantly uh, released a patch for that. Like So the guys are on top of the game. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly talk about it, because like I said, I record these games in sessions throughout the day. Uh, rather than in one um, sitting, so updates comes come uh, as I'm playing, which is really, really good. So anyway, let's continue with Alvin. Hey, how's it going? What's your practice? I bet I can beat you now. Oh, how confident. All right, I take the bet. How much? For 100 coins, we have three shots. The one who gets more points wins. You take it? Sure, let's get started. 64 points. Wow. Okay, I actually forgot my bow because I'm traveling light because I'm continuously trying to sell things um, <laughs> So I had to go to my storage there and get my bow also what I completely forgot to mention one of the other changes they made was uh, quests are now Increased in numbers. So basically your uh, quest that you get every season these quests here they have now increased them, which is really awesome because um, I was kind of thinking, okay, you know, each quest can give between 5 and 20 reps. So I just do a couple of them. Hopefully we get to a thousand, you know, for the next uh, chapter and uh, no big deal. So it should absolutely work now uh, that you can get to a thousand very quickly, especially if you start from scratch. Scratch, you should get to a thousand really, really uh, quickly indeed. And more quests means more points. Okay, we had a cheeky save. So let's step back this far. I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's go to about here. 74% Oh, that was bad Yeah, okay, let's see if we can reload because I want to win 67 okay Nice Yes, look at that that was awesome that was really really sweet Yes, and who is the master? Don't be cocky. You have a lot more experience than I do. Okay, yeah. I wonder if we should let him win and uh, load back and should let him win or if that fails the quest. I think we actually have to win because I think that's more for us actually to get better with the bow. Sure, sure. And now, I'm, and now my reward. You'll see it. I practice more and finally I'll wipe that smirk off your face. Excellent. I got 200 coins. I think we put a count of coins in the pot earlier. I'm not really sure. Let's see. Wait for the next season. Excellent. Okay, we're done with Alvin. Th these quests are fun with Alvin. We just unlocked the mine in the technology tree. We have now over 5,000 points. 5,004 points to be exact. We now can actually unlock stone fences, which I'm going to do. Yay! Because I want to check out all the fences. That's the stuff I'm really interested in. All that all the things you can build around things. So um, the palisades are great for the outside of the village. You know, the little fences are great for between for each house. The stone fences, I'm sure we find use for them as well. Like, for example, replacing the fence around our farm with a stone fence. That would be awesome. Anyway, so um, one of the comments was saying that the mine to the north, I don't know actually where it is. Say it's here. I actually don't know if it's here or there, whatever. So say it's here. 
Um, the mine in the north is a better location, apparently, because you can build the storage right beside the mine entrance. And on top of it, you building there doesn't destroy the bear spawn. Apparently, there's bear spawns on every mine, I think. So the problem with this is down here is that this extraction building destroyed the bear spawn so mines get your iron and stone and all those shenanigans as well i think they get you everything except limestone so what we are going to do is we're probably going to destroy this extract extraction building and move it um if when we rebuild it over to the clay deposit i know we can leave it wherever we want it doesn't really matter but i want for you know the correct placement i want to put it near the clay deposit here and that way we have it and right now we don't actually need it because i'm not really using it at all so what we're going to do is we're going to destroy that then we're going to build the mine and then we're probably going to destroy the hen house so we have another building free and we build a huge storage there just so we can see if we can destroy the storage so and i think this is actually a level one storage as well so and we need to upgrade anyway. Yeah. So this is the resource resource one storage. So we build a resource resource two storage um, with the new mine location. I think that's how we're gonna do it. And that way we don't go over our building limit. We don't have to rush. Um, but first we're gonna go back to the village to work on our palisades, which is more important right now because that's what we started with today. Oh, we just had another message popping up, guys. Let's get some straw. Actually, let's put the rocks away. Let's get some straw and check that out. So a few things we have unlocked. We have the mines unlocked, and now we also have unlocked, I show you now, the goose house, which is absolutely fantastical. So now that we have the goose house unlocked, we can actually purchase DOB, which I just did. So DOB is what we use to upgrade houses with. Now, I don't want to really um, do this today with the houses. I just want to see how much we actually would need and just do one wall as an example, as a quick peek. And also I'm not going to build the mine today completely, most likely, because we did uh, start working on the palisade and I want to kind of continue working on that a little bit today, hopefully. So, but I don't want to do every. I want to do everything, if you know what I mean, but I, I think it's just, you know, let's focus on one thing at a time. So let's get the hammer out and let's see what we actually need to upgrade the walls. How much dob? It says six dob. That is very expensive because I think it takes 10 clay and 10 straw to make one daub. Unless it makes 10 daub at a time. I actually don't know. So we're going to test that out. So let's get some clay here. Where's my clay? There we go. I think it takes 10, but yeah, we take 20 with us just in case. There we go. So let's head over to the barn and daub. Okay, so one daub. How much do I get? Do I get literally just one daub? Because then we need a lot of clay. Oh, we got 10 dob. Excellent. Okay, so we get 10 for 10, which is brilliant. It's just that you craft them in, uh, in stacks of 10. That is beautiful. Okay, excellent stuff. And what do they um, sell for? Eight each. So it's not a profit thing, but we definitely can use it to upgrade a wall. Okay, here we are. And we need six of them. So let's do the front. Let's do it by the door. Oh, look at that looking so sexy. Oh, yeah. Let's do the side. nice that is so beautiful I love it okay this is looking so sweet yeah we're definitely gonna um, do that between episodes now that you know how it works we're gonna do the rest between episodes uh, as I get access to clay and uh, we're gonna upgrade all the houses this is gonna be amazing Oh, man. I wonder if the heat requirement then goes up. Or the mood, actually. Yeah, look, she's at 72%. The mood actually goes up as well, which is really fantastic. Let's also quickly check out uh, demolishing the trees and getting rid of the stumps. So these are the trees I don't want in my village. I actually do like that. Maybe we leave one tree here. I think that might look good. Or leave these two trees here and get rid of these two. So what we should be able to do now is... We should be able to completely remove those tree stumps with the shovel. So let's um, clean this tree out first so we can properly see it. There we go. So let's take the shovel. And is it something? Oh, yes. And it's gone. Okay, do we have to aim it until we see the name? Or can we just do it from here? Oh, we can't click on it unless we actually see the name. There we go. And it's gone. That is amazing. I'm really loving this. And this is permanently gone now. 
All right, so I worked the farm and destroyed the rest of my wheat and I had like over 300. So what I have here now is 370 wheat grain and 20 porridge, I just made that for the night and we're going to sell all that over in the village. Hopefully that will give us a good boost in our money as well. So we always should be ahead of the next tax year basically. So let's have a look at one of the other things quickly that you guys mentioned in regards to flax and linen. So yes, selling flax directly um, in 10 flax, I think, give you 20 gold. Yeah, so each flax gives you two gold. So 20 flax give you, uh, sorry, 10 flax give you 20 gold. 10 flax make one linen um, cloth or lin linen thread, but a linen thread only se sells for 18. So somebody was saying, can you look if you can make profit from bows? Um, the long bow, probably not, but let's see, let's have a look at the bow. Now, the bow sells for 100 gold which means by the time you get it to the trader so uh, 50 is 18 so it's 36 gold yeah it sells for one linen thread sells for 18 gold or at the best the actual resource itself sells for 20 gold or if you turn the linen thread into linen fabric linen fabric sells for 26 gold so or 28 gold something like that but it's it's basically the highest profit out of flax you can get is turning it into linen cloth and selling it yeah um the flax itself, not the seeds. And a log can be turned into four firewood, which sells for two gold each. That's eight gold. So right now here, the biggest profit we can get if we're not making a bow is 26 plus eight. So it's 34 gold. So making a bow will get you two extra gold. That's it. And if I'm actually wrong that linen cloth gives you 28 gold instead of 26, I think it's actually 28, um, then you break even. So I probably would not do that and instead would actually turn my linen into linen fabric and sell that because that gives me also extra crafting experience more so than, um, see linen fabric is 80 and 40 is um, pottage, pottage gives us 14, yeah, so it's 28 gold. So we get 28 gold per linen fabric and then another eight for the logs, so that's 36. That's literally exactly the same that you get from a bow. So let's have a quick look at the resources for um, the actual um, long bow and see if we can make potentially a profit there. So we have leather here. Now I haven't figured a lot of things out with leather yet, but as far as I know, leather can't be turned into anything else except used in crafting, not like linen fabric. So if we sell leather, we sell it at one gold each pretty much. Yeah. So the longbow itself sells for 250 gold or when we get to the trader. And this is not taking any skill perks, by the way, into consideration. So without skill perks, we're getting um, for 250 gold, we get 90 gold approximately. So because 50 gold turn into 18 gold, so this is 18, 36, we get 36 for 100, so that's 72, and then another 18. So yeah, that should be about 90 gold we get for the longbow. Um, crafting the longbow, we're talking two logs, which is 16 gold we can potentially get from. Linen threads three, which is 28 gold times three, which is, so that's already, yeah, between the logs and the linen thread turned into linen uh, fabric, we're already making more gold just selling the resources. And that's it. So the next bow we have to look at is the recursive bow, but I think it only will get worse unless the recursive bow sells like for a huge amount of money, like 700 gold or, well, in conversion for about, say, 150 gold or something like, yeah, flat. Then maybe. But I think right now crafting for profit is not really as much of a thing as we want it to be potentially so look at this iron arrows cause a bleed effect look boom there you go and it's gonna die by itself so we just keep running away keep backing up and there you go so i wonder if the bleed effect is doubled if you have multiple arrows in something we're gonna have to try that out with the bigger beasts but that's pretty awesome I thought I was only imagining that um, when that happened to me when I started using iron arrows, but somebody in the comments said, no, 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 they get a bleed effect. Look, that is so cool. So I don't know how much damage it does, obviously, per tick, but I know that a second arrow kills it. So whatever damage a second arrow is doing, this is doing very, maybe it does only one damage or something over time, but very handy with deer and books that run off. 
like most of the deers actually can one shot now at this stage with the longbow um but, but bucks they're they're tough they take a couple of hours to take down so having them bleed like this is actually really good because it interrupts them um when they run and you can actually chase after them stand still quickly aim and shoot which makes hunting so much more interactively fun so how long do you take to bleed out dude look at this we i have spent nearly all my wood now on the palisade this tree i want to regrow i wanted to, to let it regrow i hope they're going to add placing seeding trees um you know that you can intentionally place them for looks and saying okay we want one here or there i also upgraded our house fully to dob which is brilliant so this is now the maximum upgraded house you can get now this is not the best house of course because you can get the the biggest house upgraded fully um but right now this is where we live which is awesome nice little house and then here we get to the village center so the village center i tried out these walls and they look pretty nice i love them they're the new um, stone walls we unlocked and they cost eight stone per wall so we're gonna have to obviously have to have two miners working non-stop in the mines for stone and whatnot I'm going to use these stone walls to actually kind of shape the center of the village and allow kind of a path in here and close it off. And then maybe we close off this here completely with stone walls so that people have to come kind of around here or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe we don't want them to walk behind here in the back and we just close it off between the two buildings here or something and then leave a little path here. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, it looks it's starting to take shape. I like it. This is really, really good. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this here for this episode. Really looking forward uh, to the next season to see how many more quests we get, to see the patches. The guys are absolutely fantastic. The devs continuously updating the game. Anyway, so we're going to leave this episode here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you like the way we go, uh, this looks and where we're going. And if you did enjoy it, remember to kick that like button in the balls. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as always, fish pass and happy gaming. Thank you.